Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to this episode where we continue where we left off in the last, uh, well, this would make, what, number five, I guess? So the last four episodes where we're creating a dog portrait in Photoshop. Uh, this is our original photo, and we're converting it into a scroll saw pattern. Now, if you remember last time, I was working on this cheek area and that's exactly where we're gonna pick up so let's just jump right in and uh, keep going whoa what it okay I did something wrong there hit control Z to get rid of that let's try this again okay so we're working in this cheek area and um, We're just going to go ahead and basically pick up where we left off. We're just uh, defining some of the details in the cheek. Uh, give it some movement, some shape. And there I am pressing the button, the wrong button again, because that's kind of what I do. And I'm going to close most of this up okay let's zoom out a little bit see where we're at uh, we can get rid of those I don't know what you'd call those little teardrops they look kinda silly so I'll just take those out um, I'm gonna take out this section whoa getting carried away there let's take out this section and that I might actually connect that section to the other. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to the number five. My heater kicked on, so there's all kinds of noise in the background. I apologize for that. I also apologize for droning on. This is quite a little project for a first screencast. I kind of wanted to ease into it, but uh, somebody on the forums was uh, interested uh, about how to do this. In fact, I believe this is his son's dog, and uh, he was interested on how to create scroll saw patterns for himself. So I figured this was a perfect opportunity to create a screencast and uh, kind of show how it can be done. Lord knows there's hundreds if not thousands of ways to do this. I'm probably taking the more labor intensive route but uh, I don't know I kinda there's a little bit of satisfaction into uh, uh, kinda kind of doing it longhand. I, I'm not really man a lot of times the way I work is I actually paint on the picture itself. I don't run it through filters uh, before I start. Uh, filters I do every once in a while if it's a especially difficult pattern uh, where you know you just don't quite know where to start. Uh, it's a great way to kinda I don't know kinda get you jump started. But typically I'll just take a picture and create a layer above that and uh, just start painting in and uh, see what I end up coming up with. Sometimes it turns out great, other times uh, not so good, but uh, for the most part I'm pretty happy with the way my uh, patterns turn out. Uh, it's definitely something I enjoy. Uh, people might have different tastes for their patterns which is fine. Different strokes to move the world, I guess. Whoops, let's go ahead and zoom out. Now there's a lot of people on the internet that will uh, just take this photograph and just run it through a series of filters and let me tell you something, they are really good at doing that. Uh, it, you really just have to kind of know those filters inside out and uh, they're, they're pros at it there's no doubt about it uh, it's 
not something that I'm particularly good at, but uh, it can be done. So it's a little bit less of this editing and a little bit more of um, manipulating uh, uh, filters and settings and filters. And uh, you can really create some amazing patterns. And uh, I showed you a couple of filters that I used in creating this pattern. Just go through and uh, play around with some of the settings. And uh, a lot of times if you take one filter, add it to another filter, and just kind of keep working it, uh, you'll come up with, uh, well, more or less what I'm creating here. <laughs> And probably uh, save you a lot of work too. But like I said, I do like to do the painting on the photograph. A lot of satisfaction there. Okay, I'm kind of working on this little dark patch here, as you can see. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue working on that. It's kind of a neat area. So I'm going to zoom in and just kind of block in a lot of these things. And it kind of comes in through here. Now at some point I'll actually do a tutorial on uh, how to more or less use filters to get about as close as you could get to the finished product. Um, and I'll do that on uh, future episodes if, uh, if this is well received. Uh, I'll certainly do a lot more of these because uh, they're kind of fun to make, and uh, I think I think people enjoy uh, learning how other people work. I'm not saying that I'm necessarily doing the way everybody else does, but uh, it's nice to see how other people work, and you can kind of take a little bit from this person and a little bit from that person and um, kind of come up with your own uh, process. Press the wrong button again. Okay. I'm going to take that section out altogether. Don't like that. Now, one thing I have noticed while recording these screencasts is that they, uh, I'm probably recording a little bit more than I should at any one setting, and it seems like the video and the audio are drifting a bit. I'm hoping I could fix that, but the program that I use to uh, do uh, the screen capture while it's a great screen capture, it's a lousy editor. And I don't know what it is about the way they capture, but uh, they also compress all of their video in such a way that it's very difficult to put into a different editor. But I'll see if I can't fix it. If not, there might be a little bit of um, drift in the audio, basically meaning that uh, what you're seeing on screen and what I'm saying might not match up exactly. It might be off by a few seconds. Um, it might be something that you're just going to have to live with, at least in this series, as I continue to experiment with this program and this software. Uh, I have fixed it considerably from what it was because it was I can go much more than 10 minutes without it drifting and uh, it was absolutely horrible but now 
seems like I'm, I don't know, I'm uh, recording about a half hour at a time. And I just noticed it on the last two of my recordings. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm babbling on about stuff that really makes no difference in uh, scroll sawing at all. I guess it's just a little sneak behind the curtain. See what goes on behind the scenes here over at Scroll Saw Studios. Scroll Saw Goodies Studios. So. And again, I would also uh, I would also like to get some feedback uh, from uh, from those of you who have watched this and uh, give me the good, bad, and the ugly. I know it's a little long-winded and uh, is kind of a complicated pattern. Uh, a lot of times you could get a lot of patterns won't be this labor-intensive. Um, this one really. How much work needs to be done to a pattern is really kind of uh, directly, I don't know, uh, controlled by how good the photograph is originally. If it's a good photograph, uh, the computer will be able to run it through filters a lot easier and get a little bit closer to your finish mark than if it was uh, just a standard snapshot uh, without real good lighting or where you're gonna have to take a lot of uh, creative liberties with the pattern now I'm just kinda going in there and I'm just kinda throwing in blocks of color and I figured maybe we'll just try to complete this section here Maybe we could get that taken care of and off of our plate Okay, and let's clean up some of these these random little bits because we don't need those. Let's take this all the way to the edge. Let's zoom out, see where we're at. Let's kind of darken up. Let's bring that down. Okay. So we're starting to get a little bit closer. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with these yet. I think I'll just take them out. So let me grab a bigger brush. So I'm going to take these out all together. I'm not really contributing that much to the pattern, so I'll just take those out. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the original picture. I think she's coming along. Let's uh, work on this section over here. And then uh, this side of the face I think will be more or less done. Uh, let's grab the number five. I'm going to close this thing up and maybe combine it to this. And then open this area up. And then I'm going to close this section off all together. OK. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the original. Kind of pop back and forth. You know what? Let's finish the collar. Because this is kind of fun over here. You can kind of see um, a lot of the fur kind of covering up the collar. And that's kind of kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and well, I'll just create fur, I suppose, huh? Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. Let's get rid of all this garbage. Uh, we might keep that there because we might keep that there. I think I'm going to work on that here in a bit. So keep pressing the wrong button. Why do they have to put the X and the S so close together? Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to do the dot to dot once again, because I want kind of nice tight control over my lines. So. Okay. Now this section here, I'm going to just take a little bit of liberty here and I'm going to create some little shadows. I'm going to use the dot to dot type thing again. And I'm just going to kind of make it up. Okay. Let's go ahead and clean all this extra garbage up. Okay. Let's zoom out. See? I think we're getting there. This looks like the clasp. It sure is. So let's go ahead and uh, play with that a little bit. I'm going to obviously create that bridge there. I'm going to open this spot up. Open this area up. Get rid of this stuff. And let's see what we got here. I'm going to Go ahead and continue down like this. And I think I kind of like that. So, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's looking all right. Okay, so let's uh, let's kind of work on the uh, neck area down here, and then uh, the then all we would have to do is worry about the muzzle. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, let's look at the original first. Boy, it's there's a lot of white down there, but we do have this nice dark patch over here. Um, we do have a little bit of dark area sent through here, so. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's get back to the brush. And uh, let's move that out of the way. Well, let's look at, let's work on the dark area first. Okay. I'm going to switch back to my Let's do a number nine because I need to color this area in and do it in a hurry. 
Looks like we're about 20 minutes into this program. Been trying to keep everything about 30 minutes, so maybe we could see if we can't get this section done real quick. And then uh, it'd be. Hopefully, it'll just be one more episode and we'll have everything done. Because let's face it, this is an awfully long screencast, but I figured a lot of you would probably like to see the entire process and those who really don't want to see the entire process is probably happy enough by watching the first episode and the last episode. Uh, so it looks like this this series will probably be pulling in at about uh, what a whopping three hours would that be really it my goodness those of you that have gotten this far you have a lot more patience than I do okay Zoom out a little bit. Let's take a look at the original. Uh, we could get rid of this area here. We don't need any of that. So let's get the bigger brush. Boy, I got to learn how to uh, speed design. If I'm going to be doing many more of these. But like I said, some of you do like to see the entire process. And those of you who don't, don't worry, uh, next time I think I'm going to definitely try to make it a little bit more concise. Because this certainly is a, a long podcast and uh, I know I probably don't have the patience to sit through something this long. Man, okay. Okay, now I'm going to try to figure out, well, let's work on this bottom area here. So, because we got a little dark areas up above that I'm not quite sure how I'm going to approach yet. So, let's get all these these dark areas taken care of first and then I'll then I'll worry about those. Okay, let's zoom out. Let's see what we got. Let's look at the original picture. Now, this is the area that I'm talking about. See these little squiggly lines? I kind of like that. Even though they're awfully hard to see in the photograph, I still kind of like it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and incorporate those. But let me go ahead and work on this area first. Let's go ahead and get this area taken care of. Let's go in and bring that in. And this is completely black over here. Let's get a bigger brush. And then zoom in a little bit. I lost my place. Where am I at? There we are. Let's get a smaller brush with black. Let's get rid of all this white garbage. OK, 
Okay, so... In this area here, I'm just going to kind of follow the contour a little bit to kind of... create like a little outline, I guess. Okay. You know what I should do? I should actually design a portrait, go through the entire process like I'm doing here, and time compress it so you can see three hours of work come together in what? Five, ten minutes? I don't know how much you would actually learn from something like that. But it certainly would be fun to see. Okay, what am I doing here? Don't want to really leave that guy out floating in the middle of nowhere. Like I said, I don't like to... The least amount of holes I have to thread my blade through, the better. So we'll just kind of hint toward it like that. Okay, this section here. This is a little fuzzy section. Um, I'm just going to start going with it and just cleaning it up and connecting things. And I'm just going to see how she looks and whether or not I like it. Um, I have a feeling that I will, though. So we're just kind of just following it along and uh, take us where the computer thinks that we need to be. Just clean up some of these gray areas, crisping up our lines. Okay, uh, this thing we don't need, that's just going to be floating out of the middle of nowhere. And okay, so let's bring this down. Uh, we want to make sure we keep that bridge there. Boy, this guy's floating in the middle of nowhere. Let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of this guy. And let's get rid of that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, got a little distracted there. So let's get back to what we were working on. Remember, we're just following the squigglies and seeing them where they take us. Okay. Question is, how does this connect? Eh, right there. So let's switch over to white. Get rid of this other garbage. And again, here we have a little lake and another little lake. Um, you know how I hate threading holes, so let's go ahead and connect those so that it's just one less blade to thread. Double checking to make sure we don't have any floaties, no islands to uh, mess us up. And let's strengthen that area a bit. Okay, and then this garbage here, let's get rid of. Looks like we're at 29 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, that's where we're going to leave off. Uh, join me next episode where hopefully we finish off the portrait all together and be done with it. Um, join me next time, and until next time, happy scrolling.